Hello, welcome to the Monday, August 21st, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Virginia Beach, Virginia. Renato looked at another interesting piece of banking matter. In this particular case, actually, it goes beyond standard banking malware. Usually banking malware is looking into stealing credentials, and definitely this banking malware does so via an HTTP proxy that it installs on the user's system. So sort of a man in a browser, man in a machine kind of setup that then allows the attacker to capture usernames, passwords, and any one-time password tokens. But in addition to that, this particular malware also installs a remote access trojan to essentially give the attacker full control over the system. It does also steal additional credentials like for example a TV access credentials and a couple of other things that it happens to find on the system. So in that sense one of the more traditional trojans banking malware which uh, we still have quite a bit around. So with all the attention being paid to crypto ransomware, there's still quite a bit of the more traditional info stealer, credential stealer, and banking malware out there. And the second piece of malware from this weekend was one that Didi looked at. It's one of these fake invoice messages that keep popping up from time to time. Kind of interesting in this case was a Base64 encoded PowerShell script. And as usual, Didi walks you through decoding uh, these scripts. So if you ever run into this yourself, uh, you can replicate what he did here and decode whatever hit your users. Starting, I believe, with the iPhone 5S, Apple started including a secure enclave with its iOS devices. This secure enclave is a special separate CPU that is used to deal with secrets that are stored, for example, to lock the phone and also to encrypt, decrypt um, data on the phone. The firmware running within that secure enclave is encrypted itself as well. Now, as of Thursday, the encryption key that is used to encrypt that firmware has been leaked. Now, this is not necessarily a huge deal. With this encryption key, you can decrypt the firmware, but you cannot necessarily access any keys stored within that secure enclave. However, one concern is that once researchers are able to decrypt the firmware, it will be easier to reverse engineer this firmware and possibly find flaws in the firmware that will then allow access to the keys. Now, in part, it actually does look a little bit like Apple does rely here somewhat on obscurity in order to protect the secure enclave. The operating system actually running within the secure enclave, also known as SEP OS, for example, does not implement a lot of the anti-exploit mechanisms that we are used to from Main Street operating systems like address space, layout randomization, and others. And over the last few years, Adobe's PDF Reader, of course, has been the source of many, many vulnerabilities that have also been exploited numerous times. So a lot of users have switched to alternative PDF readers, in particular Fox IT. Well, it turns out that Fox IT isn't necessarily all that safe either. The Serde Initiative has published a blog post pointing out two pretty straightforward to exploit vulnerabilities in Fox IT. The first one is a command injection vulnerability that allows the injection of arbitrary commands. The second one is a arbitrary file write vulnerability where an attacker could save arbitrary files to a system as a user reads a PDF. Now, uh, these are only exploitable if you do have uh, the safe reading mode disabled. Fox IT also allows you to disable JavaScript actions, which also is a contributing factor here. Now, disabling JavaScript actions may actually break some PDFs, so that's not necessarily recommended, but the safe reading mode should definitely be 
enabled. Initially, Fox IT actually stated that they're not going to fix these problems because safe reading mode takes care of it. But apparently, since then, they have decided differently and they now will release a patch for these two vulnerabilities. In the meantime, please make sure that you have safe reading mode enabled. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.